In 2013, Kanye got the two things he wanted the most, control and respect. His historic deal with Nike was over. Kanye and Adidas were the new power couple. Adidas had Kanye's back 110%, and they were ready to try something out of the ordinary. And it was perfect ground for Kanye to finally do what he wanted. During this time, Adidas was focusing on musicians and cultural icons rather than star athletes. Something that's been in the brand's DNA for a long time. They wanted to go back to the golden era when Run DMC was rocking shell toes. Pharrell Williams, Big Sean, Snoop Dogg, all were part of the Three Stripes effort to revive cultural dominance for the brand. Since then, Adidas has partnered with Beyonce, Childish Gambino, and even professional gamer Ninja. And now in 2021, they've partnered with designers like Sean Wilderspoon and Jerry Lorenzo. They actually stole quite a few big name designers from Nike at the time. The likes of Mark Dolce, Dennis Tikovic, and Mark Miner all jumped to Nike ship and moved to Adidas. But Steven Smith is by far the biggest name on the team. Steven Smith has worked on a plethora of iconic bestsellers, including the New Balance 997, the New Balance 550, the Nike Zoom Spiridon, and the Instapump Fury, just to name a few. He's one of the goats of sneaker design. Kanye did pick Steven Smith to be his right-hand man after all. Back in the early 2010s when this was all happening, the sneaker world was a different place. Nike ran the block, and one of the shoes that was running the show for them was a Nike Roshi run. This shoe started a shift in sneaker culture. Jordan retros were still popular, but sneakerheads and consumers were focusing on shoes that were more comfortable and affordable. Adidas' response to that was Boost, more specifically, the Pure Boost. And Adidas hit the lottery with this technology, and Kanye loved it. Seen here wearing the triple white pair of Ultra Boosts during his controversial Billboard's Music Awards performance in 2015 where he was booed and censored, Adidas was ready to go. They had the perfect cushioning technology in Boost, Kanye West on board, and a dream team supporting cast. Adidas was ready to take the throne from Nike. And for a brief moment, they actually did in North America. Adidas has overtaken Jordan brand in shoe sales to become the number two sneaker brand behind Nike. And ESPN sports business reporter Darren Ravel joins us now. Darren, what is behind Adidas rise? Well, first of all, it's an incredible rise. You look at 2015, they were 4% uh, in the U.S. in market share, and now they're at 11%. Uh, it's the Yeezys, obviously Kanye. He'll get more credit than probably is due. Uh, it's the classic line, the originals that they have, Stan Smith, Superstar, NMD. I mean, they have done an incredible job of marketing it. And you see it from kids to women to men all over the place. The crazy part about this is the rise really doesn't have much to do with guys like Damian Lillard and James Harden. It's all about people wearing these shoes with their jeans uh, when they're going out. And it's, it's, it's a renaissance, but it's really a point where Adidas has never really been in this country. So it's not uh, a comeback. It's, it's, it's a rise to a point where uh, Nike doesn't have anything to address another shoe the boosts, ultra boost, there's nothing that they've ever countered with. And Adidas has never been at this point in this country where they're so hot that they can't be stopped, but that's the sentiment right now. Someone leaked a photo of Kanye working on a prototype of a shoe while on a commercial flight. This blurry picture taken in an airplane doesn't show much. All we could see of what we know now as the 750 was an all suede upper, a four foot strap, and a zipper on the side with a ribbed sole. No visible Adidas branding anywhere on the shoe, except the subtle three stripes hidden under the strap. Yeezy in Adidas' first effort was met with much criticism. The sneaker as a whole was a huge departure from what we saw Kanye do with Nike. These shoes were more focused around sneakers Kanye was nostalgic for, whereas this shoe was more of a look into the future, a theme still common in Yeezy's work today. We'd see quite a few colorways of the 750. The first colorway was a gray and white, but we also got a gray and gum, brown and gum, and triple blacks. The next shoe we'd see was the Yeezy 350 V1. This is where the Adidas and Yeezy experiment would really take things to the next level. A knit low top upper with the same sort of midsole set up from the 750, very reminiscent of the Roshi runs. Steven Smith even said it was referred to as the Roshi killer among the design team. The Yeezy 350 debuted in several colorways, the turtle doves for the main debut, the pirate blacks, the moon rocks, and the Oxford tans. Only two silhouettes in, and Yeezy was already outselling his previous efforts. But there was one issue both with the 750 and the 350. They were selling out in minutes, 
Everybody and their mom wanted a pair of Yeezys. Connie, of course, knew this. We'll make more Yeezys. Eventually, everybody who wants to get Yeezys will get Yeezys. Adidas has promised me that because there's so many kids that have wanted them that couldn't get them. And I talked to the heads at Adidas and they said, we can make them. And this would finally happen with the 350 V2. The V2 improved on most of the complaints they were getting on the V1. A thicker knit upper was used for more support and structure, and a full rubber sole containing a larger boost unit compared to the V1. The original colorways were the best, the Belugas, the Black Friday pack, and the Zebras. But unfortunately now in 2022, to say this shoe is oversaturated would be an understatement. I'm sick of seeing this shoe, how about you? Leave it in the comments down below, and also if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. Colorways would come out with reflective hits, transparent stripes, earth tones, more earth tones. Pretty much every shade of brown you can think of was available for the V2. But what Kanye had said turned out to be true. Yeezys for everyone. Now, there are way too many individual Yeezy models to cover in this video, but there is one more that needs to be mentioned. It's an absolute must. Arguably the best Adidas Yeezy of them all, the 700. The 700 was an interesting turn in the Yeezy line. No knit sock uppers here. Instead, we saw all leather suede and meshes. Materials we've seen on classic runners from the 80s and 90s. When Nacho and I spoke to Stephen Smith, he referred to the Wave Runner as his spiritual successor to his work on the 990 series at New Balance. The Yeezy 700 would debut in the infamous Wave Runner colorway. But over the years, We've seen other colorways like the Moves and the Suns. It was the same thing that we saw that happened with the 350s with their various versions. There was 700 V2, V3, the minivan 700s. Yeezys for everyone, remember? This has been one of the most important sneakers in the whole dad shoe trend that has gained popularity in the past few years. In 2021, Kanye would push the boundaries even further with the 450s. A sneaker that features a claw-like outsole that is jarring to anybody who isn't a believer in Kanye's work. I quite like this shoe, I really like the all-black colorway of the silhouette. You just have to give respect to Kanye and Steven Smith for even trying to push the envelope forward at this big of a scale. In 2021, and now rolling into 2022, Yeezy has pushed the boundaries even more with models like the Foam Runners, the Knit Runners, and even making a few basketball shoes. There's even a bizarre sneaker on the way with longtime Adidas athlete D Rose. What Kanye said came to fruition. Yeezys for everyone. Don't get me wrong. Was every model a hit? Absolutely not. But what Kanye West has done with Adidas in less than 10 years is incredible. Everyone who wants a pair of Yeezys can get them now. And there are a lot to pick from, but what are some of your favorite Yeezy models? Do you own any Yeezys? I'm going to go ahead and link uh, the video that we did on the Yeezys that that Nike made, so the, the shoes that Kanye made with Nike. I made a video all about that, so I'm gonna go ahead and link it here, here, and uh, go ahead and click on that, and I will see you over, over in that video. Also, I know my voice is a little weird in this video. I actually have COVID right now. I'm positive for COVID as making this, um, as I'm making this, but uh, I appreciate your concern. I'm fine, um, and I'm feeling fine, and uh, I just wanna let you guys know that. But anyways, guys, I will catch you guys on the next one. And peace for now.